All right. I played through Death Stranding two more times. Maybe I've been trapped inside of the house for too long. Maybe I'm starting to lose my mind. But something horrible happened when I was playing this game again. Something that I never thought what I would say. I actually was having fun while playing Death Stranding. Like I said before, the downfall of working hard is that people expect that much more from you. When EA or Ubisoft put out another garbage video game, nobody bats an eye. But on the other hand, when Naughty Dog puts out a super polished, cutting edge work of art, well that's an atrocity because Joel's backpack was the wrong color. The marketing for Death Stranding leaned heavily into the fact that Kojima is one of the most trusted names in gaming. McDonald's could fail, Amazon could fail, but not this guy. Hello? Hello everyone. Hideo Kojima built Metal Gear Solid 2 in a cave with a box of scraps by himself. Go back today and try to play the old Splinter Cell games. It feels like crawling into an ancient tomb and brushing the cobwebs off of the original stone tablets pharaohs would use back in ancient Egypt to play Prince of Persia on the caveman walls. Meanwhile, MGS2 feels like it came out yesterday. Kojima and his team have always been 20 years ahead of the curve. That is, until Death Stranding. Death Stranding was one of the the most exciting and creative games of all time before it actually came out. The marketing for this game was genius. They showed us these incredibly tense cinematic trailers filled with cryptic eye-catching imagery and let your imagination run wild. Kojima was already experimenting with his approach to storytelling in The Phantom Pain by allowing players to seek out the codec calls for themselves rather than interrupt gameplay as they typically would. And with PT, it seemed like he was gearing up to fully embrace a more surrealistic approach. It was that same air of mystery that expanded Death Stranding into something far greater than it could ever be. Then the game comes out and says, okay, let's do a checklist now and systematically explain each and everything you see and suck every ounce of mystique out of this world. Kojima takes a regressive step backwards into his patented lecture-based storytelling. Just like Metal Gear, it isn't enough to have a giant robot. You have to completely stop the story in its tracks to explain for 30 minutes who commissioned the robot. How does it function? What are the controls? What company provided the metal parts? How long did it take to build? What did it cost? Was Psycho Mantis involved? Psycho Mantis. Kojima loves using expository dialogue to simulate this sense of falling down a never-ending rabbit hole. That method of storytelling is a great great fit for an espionage thriller where nothing is what it seems, but it doesn't really make sense in a story about a dude hooking people up to Wi-Fi. Real quick, let's recap the story of Death Stranding. Norman Regis is Jeff Bridges. His mom is the president of America, but she dies and tells him to save her daughter, which seems more like his wife than his sister, but his real wife and child, they died. So Guillermo del Toro gives Norman Regis a plug-in baby, but an evil army man sucks them into World War I with a tornado because he wants wants the BB. So you shoot him in the head with an assault rifle so he hugs you because you were his BB the whole time and then you find your non-wife but she's not on the beach. Sam, I am the beach. Turns out not only was she the ringleader of the terrorist, but is also the same person as your mom and is also the extinction entity, an organism whose sole purpose is to bring about a mass extinction. Now keep in mind, this is me simplifying things to make the story more digestible to you. I haven't even brought into play Frankenstein or Old Young Lady Second Version or the Symbiotic Twins or Higgs or Heartman or Die Hard Man or Guts Man because they're kind of superfluous in the big picture. When we start the game as Sam Bridges, he is very cynical and distant. He doesn't trust anyone. He doesn't want to be a part of anyone's life. The only music he listens to is Radiohead. He literally has a medical condition where his skin bruises up if someone touches him. He lives a very isolated, sad life that I think a lot of people can relate to, especially now. But then he goes on a journey to connect the entire United States up to the internet and as he's traveling across the country and delivering Cheetos to all of these people, he starts making connections. He starts making friends that begin to restore his faith in humanity. That is all the story Death Stranding needed. You walk out into a desolate landscape and slowly bring it back to life. All this bullshit with terrorists and BTs and bridge babies and evil whales and extinction entities, these things make the world of Death Stranding more unique, but also dilute and distract from what should have been a more stripped down, humanistic story. Death Stranding has seven and a half hours of cutscenes, and most of that is people explaining and re-explaining things to you. A lot of entertainment value is sacrificed so that the player knows exactly what's going on, except that so much information is presented to you that none of it actually sticks. 
fix to the lose-lose, whether it's the end of life as we know it or the nutrition facts on a can of monster energy drink. These things are treated as dramatic equals. People can teleport wherever they want, summon giant muck monsters, Norman Reedus can't be killed, Amelie is basically Superman. I could end it all. Us. Mankind. Extinction. That's what I am. How does that even mean? When the stakes are so nebulous, why do I care that some idiot is trying to fight me? I'll just transform him into a piece of seaweed and start shooting lasers out of my dick. Whatever. There are no rules. Norman Reedus is being fucking shot in the head by a man with a machine gun. And then he says, It didn't feel like he was trying to hurt us. It felt like, like he just wanted to talk. Norman Reedus has one life-changing experience after another with his father. With Amelie, he overcomes his aphimphasmophobia. He helps all of these people. He makes all of these friends. And then he says, I've got no ties to anyone or anything. I might as well be dead. I felt like that when we first met in the cave. I still do. So now we finally arrive back at the $14 million question. What is this new genre that Kojima has created? What is the strand type game? Zelda. Death Stranding is an open world game that places a large emphasis on traversal and gameplay driven geography. Hills, rivers, cliffs, rocks, canyons, slopes, mountains, mud, grass, snow, roads, bridges, buildings, all of these elements collide and converge to create an open world setting that is purposely designed around exploration. Just like Zelda did two years earlier. The funny thing is, I remember comparing Breath of the Wild to Metal Gear 5 because of how dynamic the gameplay was and how it was so open to experimentation. The most creative thing I ever did in this game was drive a motorcycle over a ladder. Now let's try the same thing but with Joker's truck. Doesn't work. Of course it doesn't because you can't get that creative. Death Stranding has hundreds of gameplay mechanics. The problem is none of them are especially fleshed out to balance in Death Stranding. You hold the triggers down. That's it. That's how you balance. It's like an ever-present QTE sequence. You might think, no, Dunky, don't jump off a bridge while carrying 200 pounds of equipment, but nope. I'm fine. I was holding the triggers down. This game has the weirdest fucking rules. Sam will trip over a pebble, but can snowboard over 10 boulders in a row. BTs can hear you breathe, but they can't hear a gigantic truck. Vehicles will get stuck on nothing, but you can also drive off of a cliff without taking damage by landing on the nose. Look, even the packages are fine. The collision detection is all fucked up. <laughs> But vehicles are so efficient that even if you get stuck on a weird spot for two minutes, it's still going to be faster to just jam it through than to get out and walk the delivery to a destination. Death Stranding hits its stride when it's operating on that wavelength between relaxing and engaging, sprinting through a patch of boulders, carving out a path through bumpy terrain, barreling downhill with a choo-choo train of packages trailing behind you, setting down a bridge of ladders to cross a strong current, the beautiful landscapes, the sound design, the the soundtrack, all of these elements combine with detailed and varied geography to create an atmosphere that is enjoyable just to walk around it. It's fun to sprint downhill as fast as you can and really try to push your luck with the balancing. It's fun to swerve and avoid oncoming rocks, conquering the harsh landscape and making it more hospitable for your fellow players. It's fun when out of nowhere Norman Reedus goes, This bike is so cool. It should be on ride for Norman Reedus. The combat is mindless. Stealth is tedious. There are long stretches where it feels like you're being punished for playing. So it's only natural that I would enjoy this game. Because at the end of the day, I am a mule. And in the world of Death Stranding, a mule is a human who feels compelled to deliver packages even without knowing why. That is exactly me. Here I am, playing this game for the third time, even though it fucking sucks ass. <laughs> 